What's up guys, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. This is the new warehouse. And it's getting closer to a real building for the longest time now, a lot of our updates kind of have more of just like the empty shell. And to a large degree, it still kind of is an empty shell, but at least there's interior walls now on this empty shell. We've done kind of like these broad overviews, kind of showed everything, but we didn't really go into any depth on any particular thing. So let's take a look. So the first thing that I'll point out in this area, originally I had plans that this was going to be kind of like a utility room. As time went on, it became like apparent that there weren't actually going to be very much in the way of utilities here. So it's not really, not, not a very good utility room if there's no utilities. But you can see here, this whole place is networked up. And uh, having like very, very, very fast internet connections, it's pretty important. I'm doing a lot of live shows, live streaming and whatnot. So these are all Cat6 cables that kind of just go throughout the building. And you can't really see it from where, you're, from, uh, where the camera's sitting, but right here is the data line that runs all the way to the house. And we still have to run that cable to come here, but we're probably gonna get like, I don't know, like four or five different Cat6 cables run them all the way through from the house, which is a good 300 feet away, all the way into this building and have a switch and whatnot. The other big thing are these guys. We're using a lot of hot water here to both heat the floors and to heat the tanks. And these are the big mains that go all the way upstairs and the boilers are gonna be located upstairs. Right here, you can see the first of two manifolds. And this is for the, the heated concrete floor. This is super comfortable. Like just to have um, the, the heat from the concrete, it just kind of just goes right through you. And it's, it's the most, I don't know, it, it's hard to explain if you've never felt heated concrete floors, but they're really, really nice. Uh, so these manifolds here are just for the floors. And there's two sets of these, so you can kind of get an idea of just how uh, widespread they are. I think there's a total of like 5,000 feet of uh, this type of piping. This is cross-linked polyethylene, or PEX. Throughout this building, you're going to see a lot of floor drains. And working in an aquaculture facility, spills happen. It's not even that spills happen. It's that spills are continuous. So you can pretty much expect a lot of salt water to be on the ground and having floor drains, very nice to have. Sinks are the most valuable piece of real estate in this whole building. So there's going to be four sinks total. One is going to be here and above the sink is going to be uh, an air exchanger called an HRV or heat recovery ventilation system. How they work is that it takes in outside air and blows out the inside air. So you're getting this constant air exchange. But what the HRV does is it actually pushes the, the outgoing and incoming air through this kind of like this honeycomb matrix. And this honeycomb doesn't let the air mix, but the heat from the air gets transferred. So what that does is like in the winter time right now, it's kind of chilly, that's why I'm kind of wearing this jacket. But what happens is the cold air from the outside coming in gets heated by the warm air inside going out. So you're able to do this gas exchange without a huge loss in heating and cooling. And the opposite is true in the summertime. The, the cooler air inside the building uh, is also going to cool down the incoming warm air from the outside in the summertime. So I, I kind of anticipate a lot of humidity issues. With one of, with one of these uh, units, it moves about 200 CFM, but we're using four of them in total, just in the downstairs. So constant air exchange uh, year round, and it, it uses these two ports. Electric for the unit, this is just general. Every single one of these is like a 20 amp circuit. And I'll show you like up in the ceiling, but we're gonna have, uh, I don't know, something like 20 or so, 20 amp receptacles there as well. But yeah, that's kind of how uh, the, the, the four quadrants are kind of laid out. There's gonna be a, like a big utility sink with an HRV overhead. And the HRV needs to be kind of above a sink because it has a drain line. Mm -hmm. 
I love these open areas. Part of it is I like the design concept of having um, these big cutout areas in the second floor, just so it becomes a lot more of an airy space. But it was also um, kind of a design necessity because originally to have this sized second floor over an area that has this bump out, because this bump out would have extended it to something like um, over 50 feet across. And it would have required a giant beam right in the, or not a beam, I'm sorry. It would have required a giant post right in the middle. And that post would have been pretty much in the middle of where I wanted to have like a big access area, like right down the middle, as well as going off to the side bump out, like the, the double doors there. So this one huge post would have been such an obstacle. So. Um, luckily, I think my dad actually came up with this idea of having uh, the, these open cutouts. So it saves us from having to put in that giant post. And it also ha you know, had these big, these big open areas. And the open areas, you could look at it as, oh, that's a waste of possible square footage on the second floor. But I kind of appreciate it now, not just because it's, it's, the nice, and, it's nice and airy, but I also have to... Um, pay for stuff in the second floor like flooring. And when you shave off a thousand square feet off your flooring budget, it's not the worst thing in the world. I think there's been enough said already about this area. This is gonna be the studio upstairs. Very echoey right now, obviously. It's just a big square room. But I'm really looking forward to this space probably the most because there's so much audiovisual equipment, just stuff that accumulates when you're kind of doing like a YouTube channel. It'd be nice to actually have everything in the same room, all laid out, organized, away from cats that are going to chew cables and destroy batteries and stuff. My, my cats are very destructive. So to have kind of like a, like a closed off area, it'll be very, very nice. Also, to do you know, shows and have guests, we kind of have to squeeze everybody into the greenhouse, and it's a, it's a very cramped space. So here, I would actually like to you know, set up a proper interview area, things like that. So I'm looking forward to it for sure. Now, I insisted on having a lot of windows because I didn't want this area to be claustrophobic at all. And I kind of wanted to always be able to look out and quickly scan what's going on outside. Most of it obviously is looking out at the second floor, but I am able to look down through those cutouts and see more or less where the, all the maintenance is gonna be happening. One of the biggest mistakes that I made uh, in the greenhouse was something that we really couldn't anticipate, which was the amount of electricity that we use out there. It was never the original plan to have a million lights in the greenhouse. The, the original plan is to use the greenhouse and use this natural sunlight and not need any lights. So for the first few years of having the greenhouse, we only maybe had three things plugged in, just a few pumps and that's it. You just relied on the sunlight. Over the years, we've gone to much more uh, artificial lighting, T5s, LEDs, metal halide, whatnot. And we've used a lot of electricity. So I pretty much wanted to install an electrical service here that we couldn't realistically grow out of. So we're going to be getting a 400 amp three phase service in addition to what's already going to the house and the greenhouse. So if we max that out somehow, I think we've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> But um, no, that should be enough for, for anything. There's a ton of electrical power coming in. These are the two boilers that are gonna be doing all the heating for the aquariums as well as the entire first floor. Uh, it's by a, by, by a company called Loch Navar, and now I had not heard of this company before. Out of the greenhouse, we used a Japanese company called Renai, which was just a, a single tankless hot water heater. Um, we also had the option of using um, Navion, which I believe is a Korean company, but this particular plumber, who I have a lot of faith in, they did a very good job so far, um, 
he is all in on these Loch Navarra boilers. He likes their controllability, he likes their durability, and just their incredible output. So these are almost uh, 200,000 BTU per hour. So yeah, they're pretty sizable units. Um, and in addition to these, we are gonna be going with one tankless hot water heater as a Navion, just for like the, um, the faucets and whatnot. But this is going to be doing all the heavy lifting as far as the tanks, the floor, and whatnot. Now, what's really cool is that these things are big enough to also do the heating of the tanks out of the greenhouse. The greenhouse um, tankless hot water system, it's been a little weird. And I, that's probably a, a topic for another video. It's a little weird. It's a little scary. So I would actually like to have, that, have the redundancy of this system also being able to control what's going on out there just in case what's going on out there fails. This here is going to be the kitchen area. And I don't do a ton of cooking, but it is nice to have a break area for the employees. And like, you know, sometimes my parents are bringing in um, some carry out or something like that. And it's nice to A, not eat it at the greenhouse because in a, a warm, humid place like a greenhouse, instantly the whole place smells like Chinese food or something, or it smells like Italian, like instantly. So, like the whole place will smell like garlic for two days. It's nice to, to not have to eat it at the greenhouse. It's nice to not have to eat it all the way in my kitchen. So we kind of wanted to have like a break area. This is gonna be uh, obviously Kitchen Island. It's gonna be one of those two level guys. So. So the kind of the work and prep area is going to be down lower and this side is going to be like a bar height. Continuing with the theme of moisture issues, I talked about the four HRVs that are going in downstairs. They're either HRVs or ERVs. There's a slight difference in, in how they, 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 they operate the same, but I think there's a slight difference in whether or not they transfer humidity or not. Um, I believe ours are HRVs, which does not transfer humidity because we really want all the humidity just to go straight out. We don't want to rehumidify the air coming in, obviously. Anyway, um, continuing on with the dehumidification process, we have, you can see, four in frame, but there's gonna be another two that are in the studio. So each of these are its own uh, exhaust fan, and they are all, each of them are 300 CFM, and they're located up in the attic, obviously, and they pump all the air out the side walls. At least in phase one here, we're looking at four 200 CFM HRVs and six, 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 300 CFM exhaust fans. And then I guess there's two uh, large, maybe I think there are about 240 CFM exhaust fans in the bathroom, but I don't anticipate those, you know, to be doing a whole lot as far as as dehumidification goes. That's my biggest concern. More than anything else, it's the humidity just eating the building from inside. Whenever you have the type of water volume that we're talking about, it's, it's a big obstacle. So we're gonna handle that just with air exchange at first. If we need more, we're gonna look into both air conditioning and dehumidification, like you know, dedicated systems for that. One last thing when it comes to dehumidification in the studio area, that's where we're at right now, um, I added a single um, 240 volt line for like an in-wall air conditioner. Uh, we probably won't need it, but just in case, I wanted this thing to be wired up already so that I could get some air conditioning, at least just in this room. It might not be that important out there, but A, it'll be nice to work in air conditioning, and two, it'll protect all the gear. All right, so that's where we're at right now, guys. Pretty good progress so far. I'm just glad that the, the insulation and the walls are up. I mean, it sounds like super echoey, but trust me, it's way quieter just to have all that insulation in. And also this building actually retains heat kind of nicely. I mean, I'm always cold, I'm always wearing a jacket. Once I think that they get done blowing in the insulation up in the attic, this place is gonna be pretty good. I mean, there's already R19 in the walls, and then they're gonna put R38 or something like that in the ceiling. and I'm sure that by that time we're going to be into summer, so it's not going to matter as far as like the as far as the floor heating or anything. But I expect that this place is going to be pretty toasty when the time comes. All right, guys, that's it from here. I'm out of here. Have a good one. <laughs>